Okay, so let's use the magic whistle. Um, I'm gonna go to the witch's hut first. No, I'm not. I'm going to Death Mountain. No, I am gonna go to the witch's hut first. Um, and I'm gonna pick up a red potion which refills the heart meter. Um, because to get the next piece of heart, uh, we're gonna need that. Um, and obviously renew my life while I'm here. Um, so yeah, we still haven't done palace number two. Uh, we're on the quest for things. And one of those things is going to be a piece of heart. Um, and now we've got, we should have enough hearts to be able to comfortably make it. Uh, by using one medicine. Uh, so we're just going to go to where I need to go to get that. Uh, which does mean we've got to trek through this stupid cave. Um, if you're exploring this game for long enough, you're going to get sick and tired of seeing these three caves. Uh, but it is easier going this way than trying to traverse up that first bit of the mountain with the rocks falling on you and the silly stone goomba things. Um, so even though it's irritating, it's better than the alternative. So, just head to the left and up the ladder. And don't get horribly killed by stone goombas and rocks. So, we want to head into the portal again. If we go down, there's a little cave hiding down here. Oh no, it's not for a piece of heart, this one, is it? It's for an... actually, it's for a magical item. Because I've just remembered what's at the end of this cave. Uh, so get our life medicine ready to traverse this spiky floor. Actually, I'm not sure now. I think maybe you're supposed to use the magic cape for this. Because I've got a sneaking suspicion that spiky floors don't hurt you when you're wearing the cape. So maybe that's what the magic cape is actually used for. Oh well. I, I honestly don't know. I'll have to try that. Ah oh well. Too late now. Refill the hearts. Get everything because we'll never come back here. And there we are, we found the cane of Binra, Binra, whatever you want to call it. But that basically makes us invulnerable, so that's really handy. But it does chew through magic like nobody's business. Um, you can see how quickly the meter's gone down there, I mean that's half a magic meter gone. Although it's better than an entire energy bar, so... Right, so now that we've... whoops! There's a skull. So now that we've got that, there's another item we want to fetch, which is up here, which we're going to need the magic mirror for. Because um, although we had access um, to the area where this item is earlier on in the game, um, we need the master sword to actually get it. Uh, so, we couldn't get it really until this point. Well, I suppose we could have. We could have got it before Palace 1, but I forgot. <laughs> so, we read this. Hold up the Master Sword and you'll get the magic of ether. So, there's the ether medallion. Okay, so we've used our bird chap to transport to just outside Link's house. And we're going to go and use another portal to get back to the Dark World. And before we go to Palace 2... Wrong button. Before we go to Palace 2, there's another item we want to pick up. Um, 
and that is the last of the three medallions. So we want to head downwards towards uh, where the desert was. So we actually passed Palace 2 on our way there, provided we don't get hit in the face by skulls lurking in the grass. fellas out of the way. Very little imagination gone into these some of these enemies. I mean some of them are just sort of jellyfish and jumping I don't know it's like a jumping haircut I don't know what that is. You know the, it, what, all I'm saying is them little jumping things the same work hasn't gone into them as has gone into this one-eyed guy that throws the bombs has it? Anyway uh, so just head to the left here and there's a big stone tablet. And again, if we use the Book of Medora and hold the Master Sword aloft and say, I have the power! Then sometimes vultures burst into flames. And we get the Bombus Medallion. So that's handy. No Battle Cat though. Battle Cat would have been brilliant. But <laughs> you're not going to see that in a Zelda game. Anywho, so look at all the stuff we've collected, and we haven't even been to Palace 2 yet. We've got a nearly full inventory of magical, mystical items. Um, but let's head to Palace 2. After getting hit in the face by pigs. Yeah, so we need to go to the light world briefly um, to empty the lake in order to progress. Um, but seeing as though we've been here before, we, we already know how to drain the lake. Uh, we did it two, two, three videos ago. So there we are, and we can make our way through the palace. Let's go and speak to Sarasalahala anyway. Yeah, he's just telling us what we already know. <clears throat> yeah. These water skimmy things are annoying because they follow you around. But what's more annoying is these bubble things that bounce off the walls. For some reason I can never see them coming. There's the first key. Night keys. See? See what happens? Oh, and there's the spitty fireball chaps. So basically everything in this entire dungeon makes a beeline for you. Um, which makes it really irritating. And these things are even more irritating. Well, until you get the hook shot that is, in which in then they become really easy. So there's the map. We need that. Not that this dungeon isn't straightforward enough. Because um, basically you shouldn't be able to get lost in this dungeon at all. Um, but it's handy knowing where you've been and where you haven't. And uh, these things on the floor, so the skeletons are bad enough and the silly floating jellyfish stingy things. Um, but that gold thing in the middle of the floor, every time you swipe your sword, it will spit a fireball in your general direction. Um, so you just have to be a bit careful about it is all. Another key hiding there. Nothing under there. So, and some skeletons. So the blue ones are okay, but the red ones 
throw bones at you if you miss them, so you really have to make sure you hit them. Oh, wrong button. So we blow a hole in the wall to get a bomb and five rupees. But I dare say most people by this point won't really need rupees. Um, rupees become a bit of a non-event from this point on. Uh, there's only two things you actually need them for and they're both optional. So. Um, from this point on you don't actually need rupees to progress. Oh, three things, sorry, I suppose. There's, there's three things that you actually need rupees for from this point on, but again, all of them are optional. But it's nice to have a full inventory of rupees, I suppose. You know, if you did need to stock up on magic potions or something. wait for the thing to jump out of the wall so I can get him. Aha, I got you. But it doesn't stop them. Infinitely spawning them ones, which makes them even more irritating. So yeah, you have to do that little trek to get the compass. Right. So now we progress through the dungeon to the point where we've got the big key. That's now the next aim. Which is usually the last item in any dungeon. Um, the reason that for that is, is I suspect strongly um, that most people when playing these games uh, wouldn't even bother with the map and the compass. They just really want the key because that's the important bit. So there's the key, little key rather. And we need to get through to that top room. So we have to backtrack a little bit. I believe that's what's called artificially prolonging. I'm sure Nintendo calls it puzzles. Um, yeah. So the blue skeletons aren't so bad because if you miss them, although you could just run into some spikes, um, but if you miss them, at least they don't throw things at you. Whereas the red ones, they throw things at you. No. You can leave by the bottom door at this point, but you don't want to do that. Because if you do that, you'll get stuck for the next bit. Bas the basic rule with these blue and red switches is um, that if there is one, and there's an easier path to get through by using it. Always never take that, almost always never take that easy path. Um, because it's going to annoy you in the long run when you have to backtrack to reset a switch. Um, so the general rules with them is, if if there's an easy way opens up by using it, um, never take it. Uh, because otherwise it messes you up later on when you realise that you shouldn't have done that. I'm trying to explain it as concisely as I can, but I know how annoying it is. Wait for the little bubble thing to go past, because I don't want to get hit by that. Yeah, see, jumping jelly tots. Right, so this room isn't particularly tricky, but there's a lot of stuff here that kind of, you know, them fireball spitty things and 
stupid bubbles that come out of nowhere. Uh, in this room, the skimmers aren't actually that bad. Because they can't really do much to, to overly annoy you. But it's the bubbly things and the fireball spitty fella that's the most annoying. So there you are. 20 rupees. That was well worth the effort. But that chest looks like there should be something more... Do you know what I mean? It's on like a little discoloured plinth all on its own. It looks like there should be more, something more special than 20 rupees hiding in there. Especially when your rupee counter sits at 999. Kind of not really worth the extra effort of going into the room again. But, you know, you have to do everything. Yeah, and this is where we would have got messed up if I hadn't have put them switches back. So again, another chest that looks like it's very special. Ah, because it is! Look, it's the master key! So that being said, this is probably, aside from the Desert Palace, um, I think this is probably the, the quickest dungeon in the game. It's probably the second quickest dungeon in the entire game. Um, if I was really gunning it and not stopping to kill things, I could probably do this entire dungeon from beginning to end in about six minutes. Although, probably not bothering to stop and get the compass and the map doing that, but still, it's quite a quick little dungeon. So we've only been in here 10 minutes and already we've got the hook shot. Boing. <laughs> the way they've, they've felt the need to emphasise the word boing. So what, what, what noise does your hook shot make? Oh, it, it goes boing. Not not boing. Not, not, a, not a subdued boing. But a big loud capital letter. Boing. So, there we are. Got the key. The last key we'll need. I think the last key. Well, the last one that we have to actually track down anyway, put it that way. Now we can progress. So now we're stuck with two doors. Ow. And we have to move the statue again. So, lots of stuff, stuff to kill in that room. But we're not going to bother with that. First of all, we're going to go downstairs. So there's some treasure under there. How do we liberate the treasure? We must find a way. As long as it's not bloody rupees. Silly jellyfish thing got in the way. That is one thing the hook shot is quite useful for is killing these things. Because you can hit them with the hook shot even when they're electrified and it doesn't do you any harm. <laughs> ah, one of them water switches. <laughs> Do -do 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 -do. A magic drain opened up. Now all we have to do is head down and we can get the treasure. So 
Two hearts. And rupees, yeah! Pretty much at this point, the most useless item in the game. Apart from, the, as I mentioned in the last video, the magic cable, although it, it turns out there may have been a use for it after all that I didn't consider. So there's lots of little sort of treasure rooms here to just top up on bits and pieces. Not proper treasure, more like I say, top up rooms. You know, maybe you're running a bit low on bombs at this point. Although I don't understand why, because you shouldn't really have needed to use any bombs in this palace so far. But you know, it, that might be a thing. So, just double checking, because if we look on the map, we can see there's actually a secret door hidden behind a waterfall. But we already know about the secret door hidden behind the waterfall trick, because that's how we got to the waterfall of wishing. There you are, and you can also kill these guys with a hook shot before they even properly materialise, so that's a good thing. Right. So now we have to swim against the current, which is really difficult, especially with these things chasing us. And as far as I know, there's no way to kill these skimmers. Although possibly with a medallion. But we have to swim against the current to get everything, so we might as well get everything while we're here. I keep pressing the wrong button. Bang. Take that. F jelly top thing. Right. Narrowly avoid the skimmers. And then try and swim against the current to get back to the door. Which again, when you don't have diagonals, is harder than it looks. So here we are at the boss, and we need the hook shot to beat this boss. And this is what we have to do. We have to get his little cloud babies away from him because they're only vulnerable when they're not attached and even then they still seem a bit dangerous No, because of the way the hook shot grapples things, you're better off attacking from the top or the sides, not the bottom. Um, because when you attack from the bottom, quite often, it grapples the thing to uh, over your head. And uh, that's not very useful at all, because then you get a hit. Now, the last one can be a bit tricky, but fairly easy that time. And the best way to do this is he's going to try and land near you and then he just bounces off the wall so you just keep doing the um, sword swipe trick and eventually you'll just kill him. I think it's six hits, is that right? Sounds right. Oh, four then, okay. So there we are, another piece of heart. And another crystal. <laughs> Onion, because of you I can escape from the clutches of the evil monsters. Thank you. Triforce will grant the wishes of whoever touches it as long as that person lives. That is why it was hidden in the Golden Land, only a select few knew of its location. But at some point that knowledge was lost. The person who rediscovered the Golden Land was Ganondorf the Evil Thief. Luckily he couldn't figure out how to return to the Light World. Well remember that you have magical powers which only the hero can make the most of. There are some other magical 
warping points like the one you saw on Death Mountain. By using them you can go between the two worlds and find the evils hidden in the Dark Road. You are the only one who can destroy Ganondorf the Thief. No, Ganon, the evil king of darkness. Yes. Hooray! So that's the end of Palace 2 then. <laughs>